We woke up on day 16 and it was a lovely hot sunny morning. We decided to stay put for the day. We had our friends Jack and Ellie from To See Waves coming down and we thought a nice barbecue on a towpath would be in order. All right, Jack, what are we making in the kitchen today? Well, we're just going to do, because it's a real quick one to impress people with, it's a real quick chicken, wrap rain bacon, put them on the grill, and that's it. Lovely, sounds nice, mate. Yep, yeah. I'll start for you. Oh, obviously, you need chicken, obviously. So we'll put that on. Put them on there. Anyway, you can use breast or thighs, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Proper man sized uh, portions there, Jack. Yeah, I'm looking about it. <coughs> so, what comes out best, uh, thighs or uh, the breast? It doesn't matter. I, I like chicken breast because you're cooking length lengthways, but it's just the same as this, really. It's the bacon that's the mystery because that puts all the moisture back into the uh, chicken. Nice. As you really. And cooking on the cob is ideal for this. It's my favourite grill that I've got. Yeah, and I should explain, it's Jack that actually introduced us to the cob. Um, so it's all your fault we've been uh, picking on it for the last few weeks. So we're going to do it. We're looking for a good 80, I'd say. 77. For a minute. 78. Whoa, enough of this chilling out. This is a narrowboat vlog. Time to get on the move again, I think. Now, one thing I should share with you is that because of COVID, we hadn't been able to do anything about renewing our BSS certificate, and it was dangerously close to running out. So the previous day I'd phoned up our local examiner near where we moor and managed to get an appointment for the weekend. And that was only a few days time. Unfortunately that meant that we were 91 miles away from where we needed to be and with over 47 locks so we really had to get a wriggle on. So today we targeted ourselves with 14 miles and 13 locks to see if we could get down to around the Great Haywood area. As you pass through the village of Barlston, there's actually quite a few good shopping opportunities here and the night before we'd taken the opportunity to stock up. Just as you leave Barlston, you pass this lovely row of cottages here on the left. I could just see me retiring somewhere like this sitting on the edge of the canal there and just watching the world go by. Travelling south, the next town we passed through was Stone. On a previous trip we'd stopped at Stone overnight. It's quite a busy place when you get away from the canal lots of shops and services. The canal side services are great too. A few water points, engineering services, etc. Everything a boater needs really. Despite all this activity, you can still get a good night's sleep here. For us, it was still eight o'clock in the morning. So we aimed to get through the first of the eight locks that go through here and then stop for a bite to eat. After a spot of breakfast, we pressed on. There are a number of good facilities points as you go through. This one's situated right in the heart of Stone itself. The one we were aiming for though is just on the very outskirts.
it had been almost a week since we last filled up the fuel and the tank was starting to get a bit low so as we were close to Great Haywood we decided to pull in and fill up there. Great Haywood entrance is quite hidden so we had to be quite careful when we came in. of a hidden entrance is that the exit is also hidden and we got quite close to this boat as we exited the marina. Also at Great Haywood is the point at which we closed the ring on the four counties. From here on in we'd be retracing our steps as we continued south. With all the pubs and restaurants closed, we chose to go for a walk in the evening after dinner and found this lovely church. And we just couldn't resist going back and revisiting the Essex Bridge. We woke very early next morning. Today was going to be a long day for us. We planned to try and do about 30 miles this time. Um, on the way up, we'd done this part in two days. And um, today we were going to try and do it in one. There's only six locks on this stretch, but it would see us go through Fradley Junction and right down towards the moorings just outside of Polesworth. We knew if we could get this leg done today, we'd be in a good position to meet our BSS examiner. If not, we knew we were going to be in for quite a tight time, time-wise. Brindley Bank Aqueduct is beautiful, but in June 1839 the body of Christina Collins was discovered here. She had boarded a freight carrying narrowboat and her intended destination was London where her husband had gone looking for work, but she never made it there. The two boatmen who ran the boat were later convicted of her murder. This story was retold by Colin Dexter in one of his Morse novels, The Wench is Dead. By about 9.30 we'd reached Rougelay, so we stopped there for a bit of breakfast and Susie went off and did a little bit of shopping too. But it wasn't for too long because we had a long way to go so we needed to get on travelling. Back at the Armitage Tunnel, Susie walked ahead again. This very, very narrow cutting it wouldn't take two boats going head to head. And actually, when she got to the far end, she radioed back to me to say that there are a couple of boats waiting for me to come through. So we went through first, and then they were able to follow after. Bradley Junction was quite busy when we approached it around about midday. 
We were quite lucky with boats coming out, it meant that we could go straight in and down. We'd already done about 11 miles at this point and four locks, so we were doing quite well. It was nice to see some life at Fradley Junction. Sure, not as buoyant as it had been other years, but there were people sitting outside on the benches at the pub and of course always lots of boats moving around. But it was about half past twelve now and it was about time we got some lunch so we moored up just after doing the turn. After an hour's break and still with 18 miles and two locks to go, we set off and continued south. As you approach Hurdlesford Junction, you can see this short section of canal that currently heads off. Most of this canal is actually under a very serious restoration project and it's hoped that one of these days you'll be able to travel down the seven miles as a route to get to Birmingham. It was getting quite late in the day when we reached the two locks at Tamworth. Um, a boat had been following us for a little while and one of its crew members jumped off to give us a hand in the locks, which normally would be great. I think they'd spent most of the afternoon, however, maybe having a few beers and chilling out. And this guy certainly wasn't on the ball. It was quite a moment when they opened the lock gate before I'd closed the other ones and let a lot of water down. It just shows you, you do have to be careful of uh, who's helping you and what experience they've got and also whether or not they've had a drink or two before they start. Fortunately no harm was really done and we were able to get through these and continue on our journey. So we finally stopped at about 9.30 in the evening, having completed all 30 miles and six locks that we set out to do. I have to be honest, we were pretty tired, but it was a very satisfying day and we got a long way down our journey. Another pretty early start on day 19, about 6.30 in the morning we got up and had breakfast. Um, planned to do 23 miles today, so not quite as much as yesterday. but. 12 locks stood between us and where we wanted to get to. Most of those locks were going to come first thing in the, in the form of the Atherston flight um, and then one final little lock at Hawkesbury Junction. The plan was to get south of Hawkesbury and find a good place to moor for the night. Halfway up the Atherston flight and we passed this narrowboat, no chance. Very strangely I actually knew where this boat was headed due to its Facebook page. They were on their route to the Langollen Canal and it was nice to be able to pass pleasantries with them and actually send them a photograph of their boat. And a little further up the flight we met this amazingly brave chap. It was his first day of owning an aeroboat and he was bringing it down on his own through all the locks. Big learning curve but he was having a lot of fun. By mid-afternoon we were making the tight turn at Hawkesbury Junction. Again it was lovely to see people out and about enjoying the scenery. We were about three miles north of Anstey at this point and I know that from Anstey onwards it gets a bit thin on the moorings so we decided to press all the way down to Hungerfield and spend the night there. So we woke up on day 20 and just reviewed progress so far. We'd done about 67 of the 95 miles we had to do so we were doing pretty well. Today we targeted ourselves to do about another 16 
to see if we could get past Braunston and just leave us the Watford flight to do on the following day. While this section of canal is now very straight, in the 1770s when it was built, it was actually quite twisty. In 1820, work began to straighten it, and that culminated in 1830 with the Newbold Tunnel being built. So we've got as far as the uh, facilities point at Rugby. Uh, just an opportunity for us to uh, get rid of some rubbish, take on a little bit more water uh, before we head on. Rugby's quite a nice place to stop. There's lots of moorings, but it's really busy with boats at the moment, so uh, you might struggle to squeeze in somewhere. By mid-morning, we'd reached the Hillmorton Locks. These are officially the UK's busiest locks. The uh, lock keepers were here on hand to help us through, which is always nice. And there was a good steady flow of boats. It's quite an easy run from Hillmorton to Braunston. And we arrived there about 3.30, 4 o'clock. The canal gods must have been on our side because the locks were in our favour and we were able to go straight up. Six locks and a long tunnel later and we pulled over for the evening, not too far from Norton Junction. It was about six o'clock and I was certainly ready to put my feet up for the evening. That meant the following day we only had a very short run to the moorings at Yelvertoft. Twenty-one days after leaving Yelvertoft and we finally made it back. In total we've done about 267 miles and 164 locks. I was staggered to when I realised that we'd actually spent six miles underground in the eight tunnels we'd passed through. And over the last 21 days, we'd spent about 135 hours on the helm. Whilst this year has undoubtedly been for many people one of the worst years, certainly that I can remember, um, we, w we did reflect on the fact we were very lucky and we'd had such a lovely break away. Three weeks on the cut, travelling around. We'd made it back in time for our BSS examiner to come and check the boat over. That was going to happen on the following day. You'll have to wait to next episode to find out what happened. Until then, thank you for watching and we hope you've enjoyed this epic summer adventure.